our friend Dan Fouch joining us this morning on the show. Dan, good morning. Good morning. Can't wait for tomorrow. Or Sunday, rather, right? Yeah, man. We're all hyped up. I wish it were tomorrow. Everyone's excited about this. And let's start with the weather in Kansas City. It looks like it won't be as brutally frigid as originally expected, but still pretty cold. You played in the Freezer Bowl, an AFC title game where the freezing cold defined the game. How does, as a quarterback like Brady or Mahomes, how can you try to prepare for those types of conditions in a playoff game? Well, the, the advantage that Brady has, obviously, is he's done it many, many times. In fact, it was, uh, you know, wasn't that long ago that, uh, you know, he played in a lot of snow uh, and uh, did quite well. So he, he has, obviously, the, the right uh, mental framework, and that's really what it comes down to, is how you're going to handle it. But more than more than the cold, it's the wind that uh, affects the quarterback, whether it's zero degrees or 100 degrees. If it's windy, it, it does uh, change the flight of the ball. But uh, when you got Patrick Mahomes and his arm strength, I think that uh, he's got the ability to, to cut through the wind as long as he keeps it in a tight spiral. So uh, you saw last week he did not wear gloves, which uh, is a pretty good indication that he feels he can handle it. There weren't big plays to be had by the Chiefs necessarily through the air last week, but they definitely moved the football well, and Mahomes seemed to have control of the offense and put up points when they needed them and also put up points early. What did you learn about Patrick Patrick Mahomes playing in that playoff game, his first playoff game, which had been against a pretty good defense up to that point in the Colts? No question. A great defense. You know, he, he's always... Uh so cool and calm. It's just never, uh, things just don't, don't seem to bother him. Uh, you know, and he's got experience going against New England. He knows what they're all about now. Uh, and he's really well coached. Uh, let's not uh, underestimate the importance of Andy Reid and, and his ability to draw game plans and, and uh, you know, work with Patrick Mahomes. How many head coaches do you see go right over after a series of plays and sit down on the bench with their quarterback and, and go over things? I mean, uh, that's how involved Andy Reid is, obviously, in his offense. But, but so I think the combination of those two really bodes well for, for the Chiefs. Dan Fouts joins us this morning on the show to look ahead to the championship games. You've had a chance, I'm sure, to sit down with Andy Reid a number of times over the years and kind of figure out what makes him tick. What do you think it's about Andy that makes him so unique as a play caller and an inventive, innovative ah. offensive mind? Well, that's just it. He, he is innovative. Uh, He's an inventor, if you will. Uh, he sees what he has in his, his personnel, uh, whether it was, uh, you know, Ron, whether it was back in Philadelphia with uh, Donovan McNabb, uh, you know, the success, success they had there, uh, the success he had with uh, Alex Smith in Kansas City, and now he's got a kid who uh, really the sky's the limit with uh, Patrick Mahomes. So uh, that's the thing that. I like when I do meet with Andy is that, uh, you know, he's very open with us uh, in our meetings. Uh, he, he actually is excited to share some of his ideas uh, in the passing game. He knows my background with Don Coriel and, and the things that we did. And so I, I think there's a, a common feeling there that, uh, you know, it's pretty exciting to throw the ball. Is that any different from your meetings with Bill Belichick? He seems like a, a guy that's really open about sharing all of his ideas about football with you. <laughs> Well, if you don't have to celebrate the team or the game that's coming up, yeah, it, it's an enjoyable conversation. <laughs> but, but once you ask him, uh, hey, how's, how's uh, so-and-so feeling? Uh, and he'd say, well, he's got to play better. <laughs> and we write that down and go on. <laughs> Dan Fouts joins us this morning on the show. There's so much attention on the quarterbacks, obviously, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. But how about the ground game, especially if it's going to be cold out? Where do you lean towards each team kind of needing a ground game or having a better ground game to to help out their quarterbacks? Well, I think what New England has done this year is they've, they've really turned the clock back with their running attack, adding, you know, uh, Devlin at fullback and running a lot of high formation uh, power plays. And, with the versatility they have with Sony Michelle and James White, Rex Burkhead, uh, they've got the ability to keep guys fresh, but also each guy brings a little bit something different to the, to the lineup. So uh, I think, uh, obviously, with Kareem Hunt no longer part of the picture in Kansas City, you got to give the edge to the, uh, the New England Patriots as far as the running game is concerned because it sets up the play action 
which Brady is so good at and so quick at getting the ball out. As a guy that as a guy that played in maybe the most beautiful offense of his era, which offense do you like watching more in the NFC Championship game? Do you enjoy watching Breeze run the Saints offense or Goff and McVay run the Rams? Well, I, I got to admit, I like them both. I mean, what's not to like about both offenses? So, uh, you know, the, the the Rams game, I thought last week, really they sent a message to the uh, Saints and probably the entire league with the way they ran the ball. Uh, that With uh, C.J. Anderson taking a lot of the uh, load off of Todd Gurley, uh, it's just having two guys over 100 yards rushing against that Dallas defense, that was uh, really eye-opening. Yeah, and I wonder, do you think that ends up being a key for Sunday's game? Do the Rams have to be able to run the football to win this game? No question, it's especially on the road in the Superdome where if you can just keep pounding the ball behind that offensive line as they did against Dallas, uh, that'll take that great crowd out of the game somewhat. And, and that's important because it's, uh, it's a very unique, loud crowd, as it is in Kansas City, too. But inside a dome... And, uh, it, it can get even worse. So uh, for the Rams, uh, the blueprint, I would think, would have to be very similar to what they did against the Cowboys. Is it shocking to you at all that at 32 years old, Sean McVay could be coaching in a Super Bowl? Well, having met with him, uh, he, he doesn't appear to be 32 years old. He, he just seems like, you know, he's, he's got such great energy and, and such great knowledge and, and uh, recall. Uh, he's he's a gamer. I mean, if, if a coach could be a gym rat, uh, that's what Sean McVay is. It does seem insane, doesn't it, that he's 32? Uh, I mean, I agree with you. He doesn't strike you as 32. It seems insane that he is 32 years old and on the cusp of a Super Bowl, doesn't it? Well, I've got socks that are 32 years old. <laughs> are they going to the Super Bowl? <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> Dan Fouts joins us this morning. Here on the DA Show, when it comes to Drew Brees, he has been under the shadow of Peyton Manning and and Tom Brady for the duration of his career. He's obviously been a Hall of Fame type guy. When you watch Drew Brees operate an offense, what are you seeing in terms of the mastery that he has at it? You know, I I broadcast games uh, with uh, Brent Musburger on ABC College Games way back when Drew was a star quarterback at Purdue. And what struck me then strikes me built to today is his vision of the field. Uh, he seems to see every inch of the field and where the receivers have that advantage uh, on the field. So uh, I think that, you know, that's part of the mastery. It's, it's something that has always been with him in, in my mind is that when he's back there in the pocket, uh, he doesn't get rattled. He, he just knows exactly what he wants to do with the ball, and he knows exactly where the defenders are on the field. The NFL on CBS analyst Dan Fouts, who's also a Pro Football Hall of Famer, joining us this morning here on the show. Check out more information about Dan by going to his website, danfouts.net. Dan, I always love our conversations, man. Enjoy the football coming up this weekend, bud, and wash those socks. Take care, guys. All right. Appreciate it. You got it. Dan Fouts joining us this morning.